Cool. So it's a Friday night in late July, almost August 2010, and uh, I'm in West Seattle. I was walking back to my car and I found this Tesla Roadster, which I didn't really know anything about. I thought it was a Ferrari until I looked a little closer. And the gentleman who this car is currently with or belongs to, I started asking him a couple questions and it seemed like it was the right thing to do to just share it in a little greater depth. So here we are. This is the Tesla Roadster, which is a completely electric vehicle yeah. and goes for about $110,000. <laughs> What a bargain. What a bargain. And apparently there are about 1,300 of these on the road, roughly 60 of them on the road in the Pacific Northwest. And my friend, what's your name? My name is Lance. Lance. I'm Leonard. Nice to meet Hi, you. Leonard. He's going to tell us a little bit about the Tesla Roadster. And let's start off with the charging pump here. Yeah, so this is designed so that you're not too confused. It's not going to be a gas pump. It's an actual electric. It uses no gasoline whatsoever. This car gets uh, 245 miles to a charge. So that's half city, half freeway driving. Um, the 0 to 60 on it is 3.7, so that makes it one of the fastest accelerating cars in the world right now. So, um, uh, the entire body of this car is made out of carbon fiber, which is the new composite that uh, Boeing, the Dreamliner, is trying to use to get, to get their product in there. So, that makes it four times stronger than steel, but uh, one-fourth the weight. Wow. Yeah. And why does this cost $110,000? Because it's a, everything about it is high performance. The other thing is the, the material, the carbon fiber material on it. So, for instance, a Carrera GT, which uh, is, uh, is the only other car that I know that's a carbon fiber car, is a $450,000 car. And that's a Porsche? And that's a Porsche, and this will outperform it. So this will outaccelerate it. Um, and that car is a half a million dollars? Yes. So it's uh, technically, that's a value. The other neat thing about it is it... Um, it costs you a little over four dollars off your electric bill to get that kind of range, and uh, it's uh, four dollars. What does that mean per charge per month? Per charge, if it's empty all the way. Okay. So it, to, to do some fun little math, the the battery is a 53 kilowatt battery, and in Seattle the electricity rate is eight cents a kilowatt. So doing that together, it's a little over four bucks to fill up the car. Cool. Can you so you can you show me the plug again that goes yeah. in? So you can plug it into just about anything that uh, that piece right there can plug into. Mm -hmm. So just a 110 outlet is just fine. Um, there's different, and this piece on the other side is the part that goes into the charge port that you saw. Okay. And this is the extent of the trunk right here? This is the trunk. It was designed and spec'd for a big bag of golf clubs. I'm holding the roof. It's a, it's a soft top roof, but you can get a... You can get a, to um, uh, a hard top on it. <laughs> no, so. I went last time. <laughs> so typically someone who purchases this would theoretically have both? Uh, if so, I would say in Seattle, in the Seattle market, um, about 40% of the owners have chosen to get the optional hard top, which is a removable hard top, and you can just bolt it on. Um, and how much does the hard top go for? About 3000 It's okay. also made out of carbon fiber. What's funny about the hard top is it weighs 8 pounds, so it's actually lighter than the soft top. Hmm. because of the same material. It's made out of this carbon fiber material. Wow. And you can see, I don't know if you can see with your camera, but do you see the weave? This is this is regular carbon fiber when you don't paint on it. Uh-huh. It looks kind of like a solar panel. It does. And then this is the acrylic stuff. This is this takes a lot harder to do. This is a lot harder to do, but this is this is called clear coat carbon fiber and that's the weave on it. Hmm. Can you show me the engine too? Yeah. So the motor the motor it's a half motor right in here. So um so is this the Porsche Carrera that we're talking about? No. Uh -uh. Is this the uh, S or? Uh, it's the Tesla Sport. It's an S. Yes. Okay. It's gorgeous. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Can we check it's out a great car. the front oh, with yeah. under the hood there? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 because it's just one gear. Yeah. So it's the torque is there anywhere. It, everybody knows the 0 to 60 is like crazy fast, it's 3.7, right. yeah. but you can punch it at 30, at 40, at 50, and you're still going to get 80% of a G no matter where you punch it from. It's a lot of fun. That's the next one after I'm going with 
Yeah, yeah. Same That's bar. Great. So, in contrast, what do you think of how much of a Porsche like that goes for? Uh, that one, I don't know. I think I didn't see the back if that was a Boxster or not. Four S. I don't know. I think that could be about seventy. Okay. Um, but the one that this competes with is the Porsche's best, which is a twin turbo. Okay. And uh, that's uh, um, you know could go hundred thousand plus. Uh, and uh, but this will this will out. Perform as far as acceleration wise any Porsche that Porsche has to offer right now. Nice. And there's my 1992 okay, so 160,000 mile Honda Accord four door in emerald green. And 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 the and the birds help fix it up a little bit and everything. Definitely. This is a great utility car. So I I applaud you for the for the utility of it. This is a car for just having some fun from day one. Though here's the thing, Tesla from day one has wanted to make a um, an affordable electric. But if you were to ask somebody three or four years ago, hey, will you drive an electric? The perception was, um, it's I'm not going to drive a golf cart on the freeway. It was like it's a, everybody thought it's underpowered and this. So the first thing that we had to do is use this to break the perception, make people take electric seriously. Hmm. It's and a funny. That's a funny angle to take on it, as opposed to the opposite of Star. I mean, obviously the technology yeah, also, takes a lot to it get. It takes also a lot of capital to mass produce a bunch of cars. So if you start at the high end and have people now, I think because of this car, the Roadster, people have taking are taking electric cars a lot more seriously. We have a sedan that's coming out. That's a fifty thousand dollar car, and then even on after that, on the engineering drawing board, there's a subcompact. Where's this car manufactured? In Menlo Park, California. Okay. Yeah. May I step into the driver's yeah, go seat? Yeah, Have a seat. Nice. You wouldn't know it, but the handle appears to be right yeah. here. And I'm going to step into this uh, this here Tesla Roadster for a second. Rides low, so put your right leg in first. And then, yeah, there you go. Right, and then your left leg in the nice. You are in a Roadster. Sweet. And it's kind of neat there. If you notice, one of the neat things is look at that left gauge. That left gauge is your miles per hour and RPM because there's only one gear on this car. Hmm. The right gauge, it starts at 12 o'clock, that right gauge right there, and that shows you energy out of the battery when you accelerate. But when you let off the accelerator, it turns into an alternator, the motor, and it catches your forward motion to slow it down. So it charges back up the battery when you're doing that. It's called regenerative braking. But right, that's the main premise in electric vehicles, right? It is definitely one of them. But you get a lot more range when you're recapturing uh, your you know, instead of wasting that energy and heating up the brake pads or wasting your brake pads in general. You're you're actually um, charging back up the battery. So ah. the pads, even on these cars, go like 80 or 100 thousand miles. If you're driving under 40 miles in regular driving, you could get away with not even touching your brakes once. <laughs> It's such a powerful slowdown that pulling off the accelerator lights up the brake lights. Sweet. So you want to flip me the keys and I'll just yeah, take yeah, it for a spin? Yeah, take it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, uh, that's a touch screen also right there. And it's kind of neat because with that touch screen, it does a bunch of things. It shows you your battery levels. Here, keep, it, keep the camera on there. And see the picture of a battery and how many miles you have left on that battery? Uh-huh. So... That right there, it does a number of functions, but that's one. Of, that's the main function, so you know how much you have left to drive. The other function is it has a, quite a few, but one of my favorites is it has a valet mode, so no one can do a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Can we go for a swing around the block together yeah. with you driving? Yeah. The... Awesome. Let's, yeah, might as well do it this way because yeah, we're rolling. Go. All right. <laughs> there you go. Back in a moment. Quick spin. See where we can swing. <laughs> All right. Wow, so there is no engine per se to turn on. Like there's, you're never going to feel it turn over. No, you'll hear something, but um, when the car's not moving, there's actually nothing moving in the car. So I just pushed it in drive. That's all there is to it. Just um, by pushing that green button? That's right. I just push it in drive. Nice. That's the gear shifter. Nice. And we're rolling, and you don't even know that there's a motor running. That's right. And there's my beautiful ride. Check out that hot. 92 Accord. Hey, it's good. You know, it's, it's always nice to have two cars. One for your super long road trips 
and one for your daily commuting fun driving car. But we take it, which one is this? This is the this is the one for your super long road trips. So, you know, but it can't be lo go in. Well, <laughs> no, I, I mean, are you going to plug it in where your destination? It uh, yeah. So we can if we go to so for instance, let's go to we can go to Portland on a single charge from Seattle. That's nice. about a 180 mile run. You get to Portland and uh, you go charge it up, plug it in or something, and uh, you can come back the next day or whatever. Um, we do it. This car, this particular, this exact car has been to Portland a number of times. Huh. Just on events that we do. And how do you restrain yourself if this is so capable of going so fast, so easily? You d you I mean, why, why, why even make a car that goes double and a half the speed limit? Because I don't understand. it's uh, if you're a, most sports car people, whether they admit it or not, people like sports cars because they're G-force junkies. And, uh, so it's all about acceleration, not the maximum speed? Right. There's not many places you can go to maximum. But look, take, watch, I'll show you what it's capable of. Ready? Okay, here we go. Hyperspace! Woo! Yeah! Woo! <laughs> you can feel that, huh? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so that's, that's why people... Uh, nice. That, that's why people... Flip a uh, Yui, let's do it again. <laughs> and what's neat is I can do it from anywhere. Let me... So here we're about 30 miles an hour. This is a neat thing. I can, I can, I can just push it anywhere without any gear shifting. Let's try it again. So you can see that that's why somebody would, you know. I wouldn't call myself a G-force junkie, but that was pretty sweet. <laughs> nice. You can feel so it. So here we are on Fauntleroy. In West Seattle on a Friday night in late August 2010, and we were test driving the Tesla Roadster with my man Lance, and uh, wow, it was pretty impressive. I don't see myself quite feeling the need to put out that 110 grand it would take to purchase this, but I... Uh, no, it's also a great car if you, um, you're you not into seeing like oil spills in the Gulf or seeing, you know, seagulls all nice and oily and stuff like that. It's, a, it's far from an environmental and uh, eco point of view, it's a wonderful car. It just depends on what your angle is for. If your angle is uh, green, the eco thing, so el any electric car will work. I'm with you. That's great and all, and but when the car is $110,000, isn't that kind of beyond the reach of almost everybody? We know that, and it is. And it's not our, our ultimate goal of Tesla is not to have cars that are out of reach. This car is is really a perception changer. The owners of these cars, um, particularly in the Northwest, they're doing it, uh, if I was to poll 90% of them, 90% um, and say, hey, if Tesla didn't exist, would you be driving around a 911 Turbo? Would you be driving around a Ferrari? And the, the answer to 90% of that is no, no way. So they're doing it more for an eco point of view. Um, they're doing it more to send a message. Uh, versus um, m m in California or maybe in, in Florida, the motivation is much more, oh, I want to have a super fast sports car. Well, we, we've merged three things together that was really hard to do with electric. We've made a very high performance car. We've made an eco car and, uh, and, it's, and, it's, and it's a pretty car. It's a gorgeous car. And so all around, if you're a car person, uh, we want somebody who is in that, uh, currently for this car, somebody who's in the market for, for something like that and wants to try an alternative other than to old-fashioned gas-burning cars, this is a wonderful answer. Yes, there, uh, two years from now, we're, ha we're coming out with a sedan that's much more affordable, and after that is a subcompact. So that's that's what's in line for, for Tesla. Nice. Let's take one more look from outside the vehicle. Sure. Can we leave a little rubber? Yeah, well, we had a little just did a little bit. <laughs> nice. Lance, thank you so much, brother. I really oh, appreciate yeah, you taking so. the time. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember yeah. this. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, it, uh, it, it, the range is 245 miles.